Thank you so much, my wife, for being up here, but we just had a baby two months ago. <laughs> so, um, if you don't know me, my wife and I do campus ministry. We used to do it at Western Washington University, and now we're at the University of Oregon. And so it's been a very big year for us. It's our first time moving away. Well, for me, it's my first time moving away from Puget Sound. I lived in Mukilteo or Bellingham my whole life. Um, we also got pregnant and had a child this year. I also became a licensed minister, and we started the ministry with, instead of 250 students like we did at Western, it's a brand new ministry, so we started six students. And so if you want to go to the next slide, this is some volunteers and our students and our staff. This is what we started the year with. And to be honest, it was kind of hard. As a pastor, it's easy to get value from the size of your church, and that's not really a very... Not very kingdom mindset to do that. Um, anyway, so we started the year with six students, and we spent, fall quarter is kind of a blitz, typically. We spend so much time trying to reach new students, encounter freshmen, get in the residence halls. We have our Bible studies in the residence halls, and we really try to have an incarnational style of ministry. We try to be in where students are so that they don't have an excuse to not make it to our Bible studies. Um, and yeah, so six, six students to start the year, and that kind of continued. We'd have some students come, we'd have some students not come. And we went to a conference in the winter for all of the, the campus ministry we're part of. It's called Chi Alpha. Um, so we went to this conference and a guy from Alaska was there and he was talking about, he planted a Chi Alpha group at the University of Anchorage. And he had super big success numbers wise. He had 200 students in his first year. And he was talking about this and he said, no, 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 we have, we have a problem. We have too many students. In my mind, I'm like, your, your whole objective is to reach students with the gospel. How could you have too many students? That doesn't make any sense at all. And he said, here's the thing. In the beginning of your ministry, you are creating the DNA that's going to transfer to every other student in that ministry. When you look at what Jesus did, he, he spent his time with 12 guys. He spoke to the multitudes, but he sought out those 12 guys and he invested, I think the calculation is about 70,000 hours in these guys' lives over three years. And those 12 people, or were the, well, I guess 11 people really, um, were, were the people who carried the, the Great Commission to the ends of the earth. They're the ones who discipled others. As they were discipled by Christ, they did the exact same thing and discipled others. And so that's what he talked about. This, this is the most important thing, is to invest very deeply in the lives of a few and set a good example of, of Christ-like discipleship so that they will do the exact same thing to another student. If I did that with three students, and they did that with three students, and they did that with three students, it's exponential growth. And so it was actually a very encouraging message to hear, and it, and it really reshaped the way we did ministry. Um, we really invested a lot in those few students that we had, and we really focused on discipling them well, teaching them how to really inductively read the Bible, teaching them how to pray, teaching them how to do all these different things. Um, so if you wanna to go to the next slide. My favorites, not my favorites, I can't say that. One of my favorite students, um, <laughs> his name is Shiloh. So he is the guy on the left up there, and he grew up in a Christian home, and he does our international ministry. So we have a traditional American ministry and like an international student ministry. We have a lot of international students there. And the guy in the middle there, his name is Wendy. He's from China, he's an international student, and he had never heard the gospel before. And so he somehow got plugged into our ministry. I don't even know how. He came to our fall retreat. He, um, I spoke on the prodigal son in our fall retreat. He, really resonated with that story, but didn't understand how Jesus fits into that. And this guy, Shiloh, all he did was disciple him. He invited him into his life. He treated him as a true friend. He talked to him about Jesus. He read the Bible together and they shared life. And this guy ended up coming to Christ and we baptized him at our spring picnic this year. And it's such a cool story. And I'm so excited because Wendy's here for another couple of years, which means that to be honest, it's, it's hard to have a white guy doing international student ministry sometimes because they're like, oh, you're obviously American. When you have someone who speaks the language, 90% of our students are Chinese, um, international students, who speaks the language and is then going to willing to make disciples. It's a lot more powerful. And so pray for students like Wendy, these, these second generation Chi Alpha students, that they would get that vision to make disciples of all nations. And you can go to the next slide. We also have some other sweet students in our ministry. The guy on the left, um, he's a guy I discipled named Jacob. And I have hair like that exact same length. So we joke about how we look like twins all the time. Um, and he's gonna be a small group leader next year. 
and he is doing an amazing job. He really takes his faith seriously, and I'm so excited to see what he does. And on the right, we're in Track Town, USA, and we ended up getting a track star <laughs> in our ministry. Got to kind of brag about that a little bit. Um, but she's a really big deal. She, like, you drive through Eugene, they have billboards on the side of the road with the track team, and she was on a billboard. We took a picture and sent it to her. It was kind of crazy. Um, she's not going to be a student leader, but she's a leader on the track team. And we are really hoping that by investing in her, discipling her, that she will go and therefore make disciples of all nations on the track team. And so things are happening in our ministry. We ended the year with about 30 students coming to our regular gatherings. Um, and if you will go over to the next slide, we just want to say thank you. We actually could not be doing this without your support. Financial support, prayer support, you guys have been an incredible blessing to Rachel and I. Um, and I'll just give a, a few quick prayer requests. A big one for Rachel and I is just energy. <laughs> I miss sleep so much. Um, but we love our son and we want to disciple him well. That's our new top priority. Um, but we also want to be faithful to this, this calling in campus ministry. So please pray for us that we'd have energy, especially in the fall, as it's a very intensive time. Uh, pray for our student leaders. Pray, pray for Jacob and Shiloh. Pray for the, the track star's name is Risa. Pray for these students. Pray that they would take the fight against sin seriously. Pray that they would take their faith seriously. Pray that they would be good disciple makers. And last but not least, uh, the movie Animal House was filmed at the University of Oregon, and it never left. <laughs> it, is, it is a very, very heavy party culture. There's tons of alcohol, there's tons of debauchery, all kinds of things, and it's hard. It is very hard to be a Christian there. It's a very postmodern culture as well. Um, and so pray, pray against that. Pray for these students, because these people who are in these campuses are the movers and shakers of tomorrow. These are the people who are going to be businessmen, businesswomen, moms and dads, teachers, doctors, lawyers. That's who these people are. And so if we can reach them with the gospel now, just imagine the kingdom impact 10 years from now when they're in their fields. So thank you so much, James. Thank you so much, Refuge. We love you guys. Let's all stand and just uh, say a prayer together. Father God, we thank you for the opportunities to see the advance of the gospel. We thank you for the opportunities to just be tiny pieces of that. Thank you for the humbling reminder of Jake, just seeing six go to 30. And do we do lift up uh, Jacob, Arisa, Shiloh. Yes. Uh, we just ask that you would be building them into the, some of the people who 10, 20 years from now will be telling their stories of how they have been used and been instruments of your peace, of your good news, and of the transforming power of the gospel. And so we thank you for the opportunity to continue to invest in the Dahlbergs and pray for their energy, for their endurance. And God, nothing's coincidence. Everything in your passage today fully applies here. Help us to even have the connective tissue to hear this exhortation and these joys. Then look in our scripture and see how nothing changes. And we all of us need to be ever attentive to these things in your name. Amen. Thank you. Thanks, man. All right. Thank you. Stay standing, everybody.